This is episode 28 of the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast. My name is Jacqueline. You can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, Pinterest, wherever you try to look me up as at Jacqueline Salem. Show notes for this podcast are in the Brooklyn Knit Folk Ravelry group. And I think that's all the places you need to know to find me. If you want to get in touch, either Ravelry Mail or BrooklynKnitFolk at gmail.com are the best ways to do that. Or Instagram. I'm on Instagram like 24-7 because I'm addicted like the rest of us. So yeah, um, it's been a while. And if you don't follow me on Instagram or um, have watched the vlog, um, you might notice it's also I'll actually just made very aware of how echoey it might be in here because I don't have any furniture in here. I just moved. So uh, I won't get into all of the details about it, but it was a very unexpected move, but I have moved and I love my new apartment. I am so excited about it. Um, so now I have my own one bedroom in Brooklyn with my two kitties. This one is Jafar. It's a big old baby. He doesn't live up to his name at all and Mika's off floating around somewhere. I'm sure she'll be here to say hello at some point. But um, with that, I guess we'll jump right in and don't get too attached to this setup or anything. I just set it up here because it's by a window and so the lighting was pretty good. But again, it may change. I really need to get a couch. I need some furniture. So with that, we will start right into the podcast. I'm looking down because show notes are down here. And um, I just want to give a very special welcome to the people who introduce themselves in the Ravelry group. And those people are V. Lau, Ellie Thomas, Lori Angela, DB Thomas 5, Cricket, Cricket Rollins, sorry, I had to read that one, Mookie Moo 1974, Shanda Faye, E. Summerfield, Old Ch Old Chesham Knit, sorry. Uh, CB Crafty Girl, C Con, Yulala, KY Munchkin, Charisma Kitty, Bim Jax, uh, Makara Skiero, Honeysuckle Farm, Alan Lily Knits, Mars Mercedes, Izzy Co, Wool Needles Hands, Sea Star Mel. Yarn and Time, Miss Cozy Couch, The Wicked Stitched, Monocory, Ladybug Marie, and The Fuji. Thank you so much for introducing yourselves or sending me messages on Ravelry. I cannot tell you how much it means to me to get to like read a little bit about you guys. So if you haven't already, please introduce yourself in the Ravelry group. I love hearing more about you, how you found Brooklyn Knit Folk, what you like to make, your favorite colors, anything that you are just feel like sharing, where you're from, special things about your town, what have you, whatever you feel like sharing. So I love reading about you guys and um, yeah, so I'd love to hear more from you in the future. Um, I'll start the episode by saying that we do, <sighs> Jafar. There's still boxes everywhere around here, so it's like their haven right now. They just jump in and out of boxes and eating tape and currently eating the box. Could you not? Sorry. <laughs> Start the episode off by saying that we do have a giveaway. Mina Phillip, who has the Knitting Expat podcast, I'm sure you've all heard of her. If not, go check her out. She is a prolific knitter. She's one of the fastest knitters I've ever seen in my life. She designs beautiful patterns, and her recent one, the second I saw it, I was like, <gasps> I need to make that, what is that pattern? And it turns out it's her new one. So it's the Snow Day Shawl, put in a picture here. She's offering up a copy to give away on this podcast, so I'm going to open up a thread in Ravelry, go and answer the prompt that's in there. I use the same prompt every time because I love it so much, and that prompt is tell me three good things that have happened to you in the last 24 hours. I just love, reading like it could be super simple like a really good dinner got to hang out with my husband i got to do something with my kids you know like whatever but i love hearing just like little good things that we don't really think about in our day to day as being good things that happen to us um and yeah so that's my favorite prompt so the prompt is always going to be uh, three good things that happened to you in the past 24 hours and then I guess after a week or two, I will close the thread, random number generator, and then I'll let Mina know if you won the pattern. So good luck to you. And then with that, we'll get into finished objects. So I do have one finished object to show with you this week. 
Um, I'm guessing a lot of you are like, one finished object, how long has it been since you've podcasted? But moving has honestly taken the life out of me, not only physically, but just mentally, emotionally. It was a big to do. So I don't have a ton of like finished objects to show you, but I do have a pretty good episode, I hope. So first finished object, or the only finished objects, are these socks. This is Sweet Sparrow Yarns in the Rudolph and Clarice colorway. It was a um, Christmas themed colorway that Julie of Sweet Sparrow Yarns uh, developed and I love it. It's like a vintage take on Christmas and I think it's adorable. For the contrasting, um, I still have to weave in my toe in, but for the contrasting heel and toe, I used Madeline Tosh, uh, Tosh Merino Light in the Tarte colorway. And I love how these turned out. I'm just so thrilled. This was my Christmas Eve cast on for the Little Bobbins Knits Christmas Eve cast on that she does every year. And you can refer to a previous episode if you're interested in hearing more about what that is. But I loved these socks. They flew by. These are gonna be a gift for my sister. She saw the colorway, fell in love immediately. And of course I love it too, but it really is perfect for her because if anybody loves Christmas, it is my sister. She would listen to Christmas music all year round if it didn't annoy the hell out of the rest of us. So these are definitely going to be for her. I um, cast on 56 stitches using my usual nine inch circulars, a two by two rib, and then a fairly long leg, a fish lips kiss heel, the foot, and then a rounded toe. That's my sock recipe for vanilla socks, at least. And I love how they turned out. Look how stellar this yarn is. Each stripe was about three to four rows. The gradation between stripe colors, it was a very smooth transition from color to color, which I really, really like. Um, I can't say enough good things about the yarn. It's super soft. It feels sturdy too, but it's just, oh, it was so wonderful to work with. This is my second time using Sweet Sparrow Knits, or Sweet Sparrow Yarns. Um, she has the Sweet Sparrow Knits podcast, and I love this yarn. Julie's aesthetic is just one of my favorites. I kind of think of it a lot in, similar, but different to kind of the aesthetic of the wool barn, like those really soft tones. So... If you haven't checked out her yarn, what are you waiting for? So yeah, these are my finished object for this episode. I love them. I can't wait to give them to Laura. And then next we have works in progress. Oh, here's the, uh, the leftovers from my socks. We will start with one that you've seen before, and that is, I went to uh, Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast. She had a holiday party this year, super fun, but like an idiot, I didn't bring any knitting with me. I don't know what I was thinking, but luckily in a house of a yarn dyer, there's probably a pretty good chance that she's gonna have some extra afloat, so she let me pick from her scrap bin, and I picked up this little half cake of her Jilted Rose colorway, and this is on her sparkle base. It's got gold Stellina. I love it. It's so, so pretty. Like dusty rose, well it's called Jilted Rose, so as the name would imply, it's like a rose color, like rose gold. It's so beautiful. I love it. And because I've only got about 50 grams of it, I'm going to be making shorty socks. And these will probably also be for my sister because I don't really like wearing shorty socks personally and she really likes wearing shorty socks. So these will be for her. And this is my first time uh, knitting with Carbons needles before. I really like the Carbons. They are an absolute joy to knit with. I feel slower with DPNs than I do with my nine inch circulars, but I'm really enjoying the needles. For DPNs and socks, I will, Magic Loop and I, we just we just don't get along. It's not gonna happen. But for DPNs, I've tried high, high, sharp DPNs in the past, and because I'm a pretty loose knitter, they just fall out of my socks. But the good thing about the Carbons is it's got this kind of grippier uh, shaft on it, and then the needle tip is metal and smooth, and it's got a really great point to it. So these are perfect, I think, for a looser knitter who prefers DPNs for that reason. So I'm really enjoying knitting on the carpens. And yeah, I did a two by two rib, 56 stitch cast on, 
knit for about an inch and then put in the fish lips kiss heel and now I'm just knitting on the foot till I get to the toe and I think for the toe I'm going to do this seems like maybe a strange color combination but this mini is from yarn yarn co another amazing dyer go check her out um, and this colorway is called electric meadow and I love neons and neutrals paired together, so I think I'm going to use this for the toe. So Jilted Rose, Electric Meadow, I don't know, kind of like a rosy thorn type of situation. Oh, oh, I have a friend. She's going to be sad that I'm picking her up. This is Mika. This is my sweet baby, but really she is the heir of Slytherin. I'm reintroducing them because I realized the cats have not been on the podcast for a very long time because they just kind of like, I don't know, they're not interested. But, um... Yeah, this is Mika. She's the heir of Slytherin. She's sweet to me, but not to new people. You gotta know her for a while. So she's just gonna perch in my lap for now. So yeah, this will be my contrasting toe. And it's got kind of flecks of red in it, which I think will look nice with the jilted rose. So I'm excited about that. And that's living in my Maker's Haven patchwork bag that's made out of mostly Rifle Paper Company fabrics. I love this bag obsessed with it and it's got this one little window in it that has this little kitty it's so cute it's like it's one of my favorite favorite bags drawstring super well made amber also dyes gorgeous yarn if you're into jewel tones she has a lot of really pretty jewel tones so i would definitely uh, suggest giving her a look if you haven't already i know molly from a home sweat house has probably um piqued your interest if nothing else because she talks about her quite a bit so my next work in progress. My favorite thing that I'm working on right now, knitting wise, this is living in my Sweet Sparrow Yarns project bag. This was one of her Christmas project bags that she gave to me as a Christmas present and I just, I cherish it. I love this bag. And it has this adorable deer pull tab on it. So, all the cows, all the suck all the sock cows right now, which is good for me because as you know, you guys have been really crazy about socks in the past few months. Um, I promise I really am like, I'm not getting sick of socks, but I definitely am like getting interested in shawls and garments again. So that will definitely be coming up, but all the cows. So Kristen is hosting, Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast is hosting the Box of Socks Cal again for the year of 2017. So I'll definitely be joining that, but not only that, Katie from Inside Number 23 is hosting a year-long Harry Potter knit-along. So if you don't know what the Harry Potter knit-along is, you can go to her channel for more info, but essentially you're just knitting Harry Potter projects throughout the year. I love Harry Potter. Slytherin for life. No shame in that game. And I'm knitting some socks that are related to Harry Potter. So, <sighs> so, Originally, I caked up this amazing skein of cat sandwich fibers. Cat sandwich fibers, MJ, she is a genius, genius dyer. I love her colors. But I have to admit that at the time when I had caked up that skein, it was right when I found out I was going to have to move in less than a month. And the colorway was very, very neon. It was so, so bright. And I felt like after that had happened and I had caked it up and I was just looking at it, the yarn cake was just sitting on my desk for days and I just couldn't cast it on and I don't know why. I was like, well, am I just not wanting to make socks? Is my knitting mojo just gone? It was probably a combination of several things, but I started rifling through my stash again and came across this colorway. This is Cheering Charm by Knox Yarn Co. Love her yarn. Danielle's yarn is amazing. And something about it just felt right. So I caked it up, and I say caked it up, but I tried to cake it up with my Knit Picks ball winder. That thing is, it is dead. Luckily, Knit Picks has amazing customer service and they replaced it for me for free and I just received it this week. So no more of these like rings of Saturn yarn cakes that it was making, but this cake just felt right. So I put the cat sandwich fibers back in my stash cast it on not only is it a harry potter reference because the colorway is called cheering charm but it's called cheering charm and at that time in my life i could have used some cheer you know with like having to move so unexpectedly and just the stress of that in new york and the political climate that's going on right now so it was just like all things fell into place for me to use this yarn so i cast it on 
and I have a hoe. So I have a hoe, and here it is. Isn't this gorgeous yarn? It just makes me so happy, which is the point, right? It's a cheering charm sock. And I just love this colorway. It's so fun to work with. I'm almost done with the second one. I turned the heel last night and started the foot. So I have um, only a little bit left to go on that. And I just don't want it to be over. I'm loving this yarn so much. The twist on it is really good. The stitch definition, the dye job, it's just gorgeous. So go and have a look at Nox Yarn Co. N-O-X Yarn Co. She's based out of California. Her yarns are amazing. She has so many beautiful colorways. There are a lot of them are quite, I don't know, it's hard to even describe her aesthetic. I really like so many yarns that she dyes, but a lot of them have these like beautiful, beautiful pastels with like punches of like contrast. They're very contrasty because they have like, you know, these kind of pops of the navy in it or pops of the neon green or neon yellow. I don't know. I just go have a look. Her yarns are really gorgeous and I want more. I need more of them, but I'm poor because I live in this apartment now. Moving is expensive. So anyway, here's my hoe. Here is my other sock, and I've got my Sucre Sucre, uh, Sucre Sucre miniature. It's the croissant because I love croissants. I'm like addicted. There was a time in my life when I was eating them every single day. More on that later with Salem Fit Trials when I get to like a review about what's been happening in my life. But here's the yarn ball, Knox Yarn Co. My usual two by two rib long leg until I feel like it, fish lips, kiss heel, and then knitting on the foot. To be honest, I haven't even tried this on yet. I just kind of knit until it looked right because I couldn't try it on on my commute home as I was knitting it. I really need to get one of those sock rulers. Um, I know the grocery girls have showed them off before. It's just called the sock ruler as far as I know. And take down the measurements for the next pair of socks that I knit so that I can just have that on hand and not have to try on a sock every time. So, yeah, I want to invest in a sock ruler, but I'm really loving how these are turning out. And then the next work in progress I want to show you is my Granny Stripes blanket. This is my bag o' minis, which I'm going through at a really quick pace now. The I'm telling you, crochet just eats yarn, and it's such a beautiful project. I love it so much. So I've got a purple that I'm working on now. So, funny story with this, I, uh, on my way home from Tennessee, Tennessee is where I'm from, where my family lives in Nashville, my sister lives in Knoxville, on my way back to New York City, my uh, train, or train, my plane had to circle around LaGuardia Airport because the visibility was so low because of fog, they couldn't see to land, and the landing gear or like navigation system in the plane had failed. Awesome, things you really wanna hear when you're up in the air. So they ended up having to land us in Providence, Rhode Island, and rather than get us a flight back, because the time it would take to get us a flight back, we would have to connect to Boston and then back to New York, blah, blah, whatever. Long story short, the shortest method to get us back home was a bus. I was actually really excited about this because I like riding and feel like transportation where I can kind of see what's happening. So I love cars. I love trains, I love buses, especially if I don't have to be the one driving. So I was really excited. Three to four hours of uninterrupted time to work on the blanket, sign me up, it was great. So I had like a whole two seats to myself, just like spread out my blanket and all my minis and this is the status of my blanket right now. I'm just loving it. And for me personally, I don't do an exact stripe across and stop. I kind of like the patchier look to it personally. So I'm not going all the way across. And I've said in previous episodes kind of like my overall recipe for this, but 
um, for just kind of a quick reference, I did somewhere around the 340 to 360 chains in the foundation row. I don't know exactly because I didn't count. I lose count really easily when I cast on in general. So with this, there was no way it was going to happen. But when I finished the foundation chain, it was fine. I just kind of like fudged it if it didn't work out at the end. It's been totally fine. So it's going to be a queen size in length. I'm loving the colors. It's like neutrals with pops of neon. A lot of pastel too. I'm just, oof, I love it. It's so much fun to work on. It's so addictive. So that's the status of my granny stripe blanket. I'm currently working in some of this. I won't use this full thing again because I don't like doing like full stripes, but I think that I'm pretty sure this is oval. So that's the current colorway that I'm using. And my hook is a size F. 3.75 millimeter and this is just a clover hook and I really like it. It's very malleable and squishy in the hand. And that's my granny stripe blanket. And then the last knitting work in progress that I want to show you is something that's been in hibernation for a little while and I really really want to make a concentrated effort to fix it or fix it, finish it. It's hella cabling and it's just it's a lot. I'm also making it bigger than the pattern itself actually calls for so because I don't like small shawls but I really want to make an effort to finish this so this is the edge of the shawl this is the heady shawl by Isolde T this is the edge of the shawl this is the center of the outside edge so essentially I have to knit all of this up on the other side and I'm using Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the hayloft colorway for the edge and then the interior portion you pick up the stitches along the interior and then kind of knit a garter back and forth for the interior I'm using um, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in postcard I love working with Brooklyn Tweed I know it's a very polarizing yarn in terms of experience working with it but as a loose knitter especially, I have absolutely no problems with breakage, so I really, really enjoy it. And the finished objects, it's really, really nice and wooly when you're working with it, but blocking shelter or Brooklyn Tweed yarns takes it to a whole new level. If you've never um, felt it before, um, I definitely would block your finished objects. It just totally transforms it because I felt it a lot of samples, of course, in Pearl Soho or Engage Intention when Michelle Wong had that. So I really, really love Brooklyn Tweed yarn. It's soft, but not like, not like Madeline Tosh soft. It's just in a different way, but it's not scratchy like a lot of these kind of more farmhousey kinds of yarns are. And the stitch definition is incredible with it. Look at those cables. I'm obsessed. I love, love, love how the Brooklyn Tweed is working up in this particular pattern. And again, this is the Heady Shawl by Isolde Teague, and it will all be in the show notes. So I have a little ways to go left on this edging, and then after that, it will be really smooth sailing, just knits, 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 but it's just a lot, it's a lot of work. So this one is a labor of love. It's one that I kind of fell out of love with for a little while there just because I felt like it was taking so long. I did watch some tutorials on how to cable without a cable needle, so hopefully that will speed things up a little bit. I need to refresh my memory because honestly I have no clue and can't remember how to do it already, but um, that's living in my cat's kettle project bag. This is a Legends of Zelda bag and it has this awesome key. So. Yep, this is going to come out of hibernation. I really, really, really want to work on this. So that's it for knitting content. Um, now we're going to move into the Spoolish Game segment of the podcast, which is where I talk about sewing projects, um, garment making, quilting, etc. And I want to let you know, I'm very, again, so sorry with the move and everything. The Quilt Along Materials video has taken me a lot longer to get out to you than I would have liked. I really wanted to get it out by mid-January. It hasn't happened yet. I'm hoping to film the materials video for the quilt along um, right after I finish filming this podcast episode. So stay tuned um, for the materials video. I'm going to go over all the things that you're going to need to make this quilt 
and then kind of break it up into need to haves versus really nice to have things that will make your life so much easier. And then my hope is that, my, or my idea is that I'm going to also make kind of like a, a materials list that you can just print off so you don't have to sit there and like write down all the stuff you need. So I will be hopefully making a materials list for you so that you can just print that off and go and you know to the store and get it. Or if it will be helpful, and maybe I'll do both, I'll link to Amazon so you could just order a lot, as much as you can online. Of course, not the fabrics. I mean, you could order your fabrics from fabric.com or something like that. So technically you could do all of this online, but I will try to make it as easy, like user friendly as I possibly can. So hopefully that will be coming soon. I'm gonna try to film that video today, but I will show you the fabrics that I purchased to use for the tutorials. My plan is that I want to make and do the entire quilt before I even release the videos because I wanna spend my time answering your questions and helping you and not having to stress about getting my own version of it done in time. So I wanna bulk film all of the videos and then help you guys along the way with your questions. So that is my plan. But the materials video I will be releasing first just because I know you guys will need time to amass whatever you know materials that you end up buying for it. So I will show you what I got fabrics wise. So these are my fabrics. I'm going with a complementary color scheme, kind of like a blue and orange, if you will. And if you haven't heard already, the quilt along is going to be a six inch square quilt along. I think that's gonna make it very easy for people to kind of make it their own. You could do something as simple as two color alternating six inch squares. You could do a gradient from one color down to, you know, from one corner down to the other corner. You could kind of make your own design. Like again, this is something that I really want to help you guys with by making, I'm probably gonna make you like a, coloring sheet and then some suggested ideas for to you know help you get started and if you like this one and you can do this one you know so that's the idea it's a six inch square quilt here's the first fabric i got i'm not sure if it's coming off easily but it's like a vine print i got all of these from joanne this one this one I'm so excited just looking at these again I haven't looked at these since I brought them back from Tennessee this one this one's black not navy but who cares this one love that I love all of them obviously this check kind of watercolor blue triangles. And then for the pops of orange, I got these two. Aren't they cute? I love them. So those are the fabrics that I got. By no means will you have to get this amount. You'll see whenever I make kind of the materials list again and go over uh, fabrics in particular, the amount and different styles of fabrics that you get is going to be 100% dependent on the pattern that you make for yourself. Again, it's just six inch square, so it could just be, you know, color A, color B, color A, color B. You know, you could just alternate and be very, very simple with it you could do it completely random. Um, so like I said, it, this is not necessarily indicative of what you will have to buy and figure out. It just all depends on what kind of pattern you want to do with your six inch squares. And pattern meaning the colors, like the order of the color that you use. It's all gonna be the same pattern for everybody, so there's not gonna be any confusion. So yeah, I'm really, really excited about this. These are the fabrics I've chosen. And I can't wait to get started with that and film a materials video so that you guys can start getting your stuff together. The next two things I want to talk about for Spoolish Games are related to sewing. I haven't started started them yet, but it's, again, the move, crazy. But um, two things that are like very high priority on my list of sewing right now. The first one, I've just been dying to make it, I just haven't gotten around to it yet, is 
the Boylston bra, which is a pattern by Orange Lingerie. And I bought a kit from the Tailor Made shop that has all of the materials that you need to make a bra. So that's what I'm going to use the lace, this pretty black lace with a purple stitch detail on it. It's got purple strap. You can't see it because of the light. Purple straps, black straps, underwire. All these things that I don't know the names for, but that I plan on learning. Um, and I can't wait to do it, especially after seeing Maria from Stitched in Sweden's, her gorgeous, gorgeous patterns that she's been making. Sorry, I'm looking down here because there's one thing I wanted to know to tell you. Oh yeah, so um, there's an amazing craftsy class that uh, Maria recommends. I bought the craftsy class and watched it. It was super informative and it's called uh, Sewing Bras Construction and Fit. And the instructor is Beverly Johnson. I would definitely recommend um, purchasing that craftsy class if you're interested in bra making. It was just really, really thorough and informative and I think I'll be using a lot of the uh, techniques that she taught. And then for Christmas, my mom got me some of this kind of lilac colored lace. I asked for it from the Tailor Made shop again. It's a stretch lace. And it looks kind of white on here. I'm not sure if it's going to come off properly on the camera, but it's like a lilac purpley color. So this will be for another bra. So I still have to get all the other materials that I'll need. Um, but I have this in the stash. And then the second project that I'm really wanting to make is a skirt out of... Funny bone, not so funny. Anyway, a skirt out of this quilted fabric. I really, really, really want a very full skirt. Maybe a half circle, I don't know, we'll see. Out of this fabric here. Cannot wait. So that's another top priority for sewing. And then with that, we're gonna move into acquisition segment of the podcast, where I talk about things I have acquired. Um, some of these were Christmas presents, some of these were housewarming gifts, some of these were things I purchased, but we'll just go through one by one as I pulled them out. Vogue Knitting Live. Oh, if you guys watched the vlog, you know it was such a such an amazing day spent with wonderful friends. I will look so fondly on that day. It's just like one of the best days of my life, getting to spend it with some crafty friends who I adore and meeting so many fabulous people like uh, Katie from Inside Number 23. It was wonderful and just got to shop for some cool yarn. So this is a skein I've had my eye on for ages. I've been wanting to buy it and I just haven't yet. It's Hedgehog Fibers Sock Yarn in Pistachio. Isn't this gorgeous? Kind of lavenders, lilacs, mints hints of blue in places, and then speckles of brown. It's an incredible colorway. I love it. I've been, had my eye on this for so long. This might be my next cast on. I'm in love with this colorway. The next thing I got at Vogue Knitting Live was this skein of Into the Whirl. And I saw this colorway, it's called Cardamom, at Rhinebeck and it sold out before I could go back to get it. So when I saw it at Vogue Knitting Live, I snagged it. It's like a sagey green color. I just, it's so pretty. Semi-solid. And it's on there. Pekoku Sak, 100 grams, 460 yards. It's a four ply, 75-25 merino nylon. Love this. And then another skein I've loved into, or into the world. That's what I just bought. Narwhal Needleworks for a long time, but I just, again, with the move and everything and doing it so unexpectedly, I just didn't have the budget. So Julie surprised me with this skein that I was like eyeballing at Vogue Knitting Live as a housewarming gift. And this is Narwhal Needleworks on the Ravenwood base. It's a tweed base. It's 70 or 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, and the colorway is called The Wanderers. Isn't this gorgeous? 
Here's their tag. Again, that's Narwhal Needleworks. Needlework. Narwhal Needlework. Love this. Thank you so much, Julie. And then some Christmas acquisitions. My mom and dad have two cats, and I don't know if you guys have ever purchased Knit Picks yarn before, but it is, at least in my experience, it has a very strong sheepy scent to it. At least Knit Picks Felici does. And when I opened a bag of Felici that I had purchased a long time ago, it like knocks you over. It's a very strong scent. So it is no wonder to me that my mom's cats found it and wreaked havoc on my yarn. My parents found the skeins eventually and hand wound them, bless them, what sweethearts, because <laughs> it was part of a Christmas present to me. But this is Knit Picks Felici in the chickadee colorway. And then they also got um, the Lost Lakes colorway for me, which I love. Cats got to this one too, but clearly not as badly as they did to these ones. Knit Picks Felici is so soft. I love it. And there's still plenty up on the Knit Picks website right now. So if you're interested in trying it out, it's a self-striping sock yarn. Go get some. It's amazing. I love it. So yeah. 75.25 Superwash Merino Nylon. Super, super soft. And then a Christmas present from my wonderful friend Katrina, aka Cat's Kettle Dyer on Instagram. I love this. This is her Eggs, Eggs, Eggs colorway, which was developed uh, with the Grocery Girls for a kit that she did for them. I'm obsessed with this. If you guys have seen swatches of it, it is beautiful. I only have two skeins of it, and I'm thinking about if she will humor me if she'll oblige if I can buy a few more and potentially make a cardigan out of it because I think it would be an excellent cardigan colorway so I've got that kind of in the back of my head so so gorgeous and then she also gave me this skein which is like a navy blue it doesn't have a colorway name so I'm not sure if it's actually something she sells in her shop but it's gorgeous and goes with the eggs, eggs, eggs. So I could potentially make a very large shawl with it. I'm not typically, I never say never, because I'm sure I have, you know, in the past, but I'm not typically a two color shawl person. So I like like one big shawl that has the same color or like crazy Stephen West where you mix a ton of colors together. So I'm not sure how exactly, I know I'll use this somewhere, but I'm not sure if it will be with this because this has cardigan in my head. I really want to knit the Andromeda cardigan by Pam Allen. Gorgeous pattern. So maybe I'll find a way to get more of this to make that. And then, last but not least, uh, Helen of the Curious Handmade podcast. She surprised me with, um, from the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted is a Instagram hashtag that you post what your yarn wishes are and if people have it in their stash or are able to easily get it for you, they will buy it and, or give it from their own stash and send it to you. And Helen remembered that one of my wishes was Moel View Yarn. I'm obsessed with Moel View Yarn. Her yarns are beautiful. And she surprised me with this stain. It looks like Aran weight. It's pretty heavy weight yarn. But I can't tell if it does it say on here. Oh, it says DK. Huh. Well, it's quite thick. Maybe when you knit it up, it's not as thick. I don't know. But anyway, this gorgeous stain of Moel View Yarn. I'm so excited to try it. It is definitely different from what I expected it to be in terms of feel. It's got a nice little halo to it, which I'm not sure is coming off on camera, but it has a nice halo to it. It's sheepier, woolier feeling. It is still quite soft, but definitely one of those sheepier kinds of yarns. So I'm very excited to have this in my stash and can't wait for it to reveal what its true nature will be one day. And then with that, oh no. So, I won a giveaway. Probably the best giveaway I've ever seen on Instagram, ever. 
Have you guys heard of Hey Mama Wolf before? Because if not, you need to check her out. She is doing some amazing things. And she was doing a giveaway for dye kits that were in her shop. So they had a dye kit for yarn and a dye kit for fabric. And as you may or may not know from following me on Instagram or previous episodes of the podcast, I've been very interested in dyeing fabric because I would love to make a quilt out of naturally dyed fabrics. I think that would be so cool. So I won't, well, it would be kind of pointless to not show you. It's just, it's very packed in here. Can you see? So we've got some fabrics. There are jars of all the things that I will need to dye up fabric. We've got washing soap, alum, oak, oak something. I don't see, I haven't even read everything yet because I got this right before I was about to move. So I don't even know all the contents in here, but basically it's a natural dye kit for fabric. I want it in a giveaway on Instagram. I am so excited about this, so excited. I've also been saving up avocado stones on my desk at work for months now and I have amassed quite a few avocado stones now so that makes a really lovely blush pink dye for anybody who didn't know so i can't wait to start experimenting with that and with that i am finished with um showing you all the stuff so now I'll just talk very briefly about my new apartment so if you're interested in hearing about that um feel free to stick around if not thank you for joining me um so moving was crazy as you know but it is amazing having my own space. I cannot wait to make it my own. I'm so thrilled to be here. I love my apartment. It's a one bedroom. I'm going to be acquiring things slowly. I have a vision, a Pinterest board already started for the apartment. And I know I'm gonna like really love it and wanna be here for a long time. So I'm so thrilled to have found it. And my commute time, when I lived in Williamsburg, just where I lived before I live now. I, my commute was like 25 minutes to work, very short on a very densely packed train. Knitting on the train in the morning was not gonna happen on the L train. But now I live off of the R train and um, I live about 40 to 55 minutes away from work, depending on if I take the train that stops at every stop or an express train. Try not to bore you with all the details, but basically if I take the express train for 40 minutes, I have to stand the whole time versus sitting on a 55 minute train. So I'll take the sitting. And let me tell you, my knitting, I get so much done because I have, you know, almost two hours a day of knitting time on the train. It's great. And they have started adding cell service at a lot of the stations, but for the most part, I don't get cell service underground. So that also is kind of nice to just like disconnect from all of the noise and just have this like quiet time where I can focus on something that I want to do like knitting or reading or listening to podcasts or listening to music it's just I'm really enjoying having that time there may come a time when I'm really tired of it and don't like it but for now it's really suiting me and I'm just really excited about this whole this whole thing so um, another thing too, you may know from, again, previous episodes of this podcast, I started kind of like a fitness regimen. Um, I was doing BBG, which stands for Bikini Body Guide. It's kind of a damn name, I know, but the workouts are really, really great, really hard. Um, and I also discovered cycling, indoor cycling in this time from one of my friends who introduced me to cycling classes, fell in love with it. And I'm just really excited because I'm like finally starting to like see results from it. If you want to follow me at Salem Fit Trials on Instagram, again, Salem Fit Trials, um, you can feel free. No pressure. It's not at all relating to knitting. It's just related to exercise, recipes that I try. Um, I've come across several recipes. I'm cooking a lot more now than I ever was before, trying not to eat out as much for dinner, at least. For lunch, it's just like, it's, imp it's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, so I'm really excited because I'm starting to see results from that. Um, if you are not or have not watched The OA on Netflix, run and watch it. I know it got very mixed reviews, but it's, I loved it. It is not for everybody. It is kind of an intense show, but it was really good. So if you like dramas, 
run and watch it. Again, that's called The OA. So I binge watched all of that. Um, my New Year's Eve and New Year's Day were pretty uneventful, honestly. I was at home and I was the only one awake. So I just kind of stayed up and had my own little New Year's celebration. Um, that was when I was in Tennessee, so I didn't have a car or anything like that. So it is what it is. But yeah, other than that, I mean, the apartment is really big news. <laughs> So I'm just really excited about that and knitting all of the things and my crafting mojo. I don't know if it's just because I'm finally settled or what or have this space, but just like, I just feel so inspired by everything and want to make all of the things, you guys. I just like can't even tell you. And then, if you didn't see on Instagram, on the train, my I don't know what it is, if the R train is just the knitting train or what, but I see knitters everywhere now. I don't know if it's because I moved to a place where there are just more of them compared to the L train, which is just way too crowded to do it, or if it's just because we're increasing in numbers. But either way, I think that's really exciting. And if you guys didn't see already, the uh, Pussy Hat Project made it to the cover of Time Magazine. Time Magazine. That's incredible. Like a knitting movement made the cover of Time Magazine. That's huge. So that was just so exciting to see. I really, once again, once I start, you know, getting more furniture, like a couch and stuff like that, I really want to start hosting like crafternoons and craft parties and stuff at my apartment and like having people over. I just like can't wait. So I just have all these dreams and plans for the space and I'm no, we'll come together slowly but surely, and I'll be sure to keep you guys um, in the loop for when that does, and hopefully show you some like house projects and stuff like that. First thing, order of business is gonna be curtains. I really need some curtains because I don't have any, so I'm just like hiding out in my bathroom whenever I need to change, but it's, yeah, curtains need to happen. So anyway, house projects, house things. Oh, that reminds me. So Diane. I'm blanking on your Instagram name. It's like Winnie Chick or something like that. I can't remember for sure, but I know your name is Diane. She sent me as a housewarming gift this crochet garland, which is just like my colors to a T. Neutrals, light pinks. I love it. I cannot wait. I haven't found the perfect place for it yet, but this gorgeous garland. I love it. Thank you so much, Diane, for that. And then also, I wanted to show you guys this journal thing that I got. So bullet journals are making the rounds on Instagram right now. And while I love looking at other people's bullet journals, it's just not a sustainable thing for me personally. But this, the 52 lists project, definitely something I can get behind. So what it is, is a weekly list. So we'll start with winter, or you can start, you know, in the summer if you live in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and then list one, for example, is list your goals and dreams for this year. And so you spend the week listing out as you think of things or want to add to it, the goal, your goals and dreams for the year. And at the very end, there's like a take action space. And this one is, what is the first step toward achieving your biggest goal? Pick one thing you can do this week to get started. So that's just week one. And then week two, List your favorite characters from books, movies, etc. And then the take action is find a common personality trait between your favorite characters. What is one character trait that you admire in your favorite characters that you can work toward this week? And so on and so forth. Like list the happiest moments of your life so far. List the soundtrack of your life right now. List what you would like your life to look like in 10 years. So I think it's just a really neat way to get to know yourself without having to put so much time and energy into it um, as you would a, bur a bullet journal. So again, that's the 52 Lists Project, and the author of it is Moria Seal. I'll put this in the show notes for you if you're interested, but I think with that, that's going to be the end of this podcast episode for today. Stay tuned for a materials video for the quilt along if you're interested. If you have any questions about anything you've seen on this, just ask in the Ravelry group. And thank you again so much for your support and your friendship and for being you. You guys are the greatest. Have a great couple of weeks until I see you next time. Bye! Mwah.